conquest of space is worth the risk of life. Our God-given curiosity will force us to go there ourselves because in the final analysis, only man can fully evaluate the moon in terms understandable to other men. Gus Grissom spoke with me earlier about his own philosophy on what risks he took while being an astronaut. Oh, I doubt if I have any philosophy towards the danger. I, I recognize that, that uh, there is some risk, <clears throat> but uh, uh, we just try to take as much of that out, of, out as we can during the pre-testing to make sure the systems are good. We recognize that there are unknowns and things can happen that, that we haven't planned for. But uh, I try to take care of this by, by leaving an open mind and, and trying not to let the fellows get stereotyped in malfunction procedures and the way we do things and, and make sure that, at least try to make sure that they don't do anything impulsively. If, if we get a noise or something happens, we, Take a check. Take time to see what we're doing, and make sure that, and make sure, I make sure that every time they move a switch or push a button, that they look and uh, they have the right one. You know, there's no this blind, blindfold cockpit business. Gus Grissom knew what the problems are, knew what the risks are, and also knew the haunting failures <clears throat> that can accompany a space flight. His Liberty Bell 7 from his Mercury Redstone flight back in 1961 had sunk in an accident that has never, never quite adequately been explained, and Gus had always felt badly about losing that spacecraft. The senior pilot, or SP as he's called, aboard uh, the Apollo spacecraft, Lieutenant Colonel Ed White, 36 years old. In June of 1965, he made history when he became our first man to walk in space. It came just three months after Russia's Alexei Leonov had become the world's first spacewalker aboard Voshkod 1. Here's the actual film of Ed White, 180 miles over the Pacific Ocean. Ed White, superbly conditioned. Ed White, who played handball, ran on the beach, lifted barbells, who was afraid of no man and deeply believed in God. His 20 minutes outside the spacecraft, his EVA or extravehicular activity on an umbilical brought us up to par in the space race. He doubled the EVA time set by Russia's Lanov in a flawlessly performed mission. These pictures taken by command pilot Jim McDivitt inside Gemini 4. Back in those early days of Gemini, a much simpler vehicle than Apollo. If any of our astronauts have ever been worried, they've never said so for the record. Still, those of us who cover the space story keep asking them about the dangers, and Ed White recently answered me this way. Well, I always look forward to uh, flying, and I look forward to test flying. I haven't been in combat, so I can't say that. And in the same manner, I look forward to the, my flight in Gemini 4, and I'm really looking forward to this flight in Apollo. I think that the, the difference in people might look at our work as, as uh, being perhaps dangerous or risky of sorts, but I think we train in it and work in it so much that, and understand it well enough that we don't look at it from this viewpoint. No words. I don't. I'm speaking for myself. You're aware of the risks. And we accept the risks, if there are, what risks there are. And the people we work with uh, do everything that's humanly possible to reduce these risks to as small as possible. And you believe in them? I believe in the, I believe very deeply in the people we work with and the crew. I certainly do. Ed White, who understood the risks, too, and was a marvelous human being in his own way. When we did that interview the other week in Houston, it was actually December 16th, about a month ago, in what's called uh, the crew pre-launch interviews, we ran over a little bit, and Ed White shied at us, as usual. And so that's all right. We don't mind waiting. We waited long enough for this flight and gave us the five or ten minutes extra that we needed to complete the interview. Despite the risks, which they all knew only too well, there were and are certain advantages to being an astronaut. Roger Chaffee explained to me what he wanted to gain out of his spaceflight training and experience. I asked if there were any advantages to being a young, new astronaut. Well, I don't know if it gives you any special advantages. Uh, I think NASA policy is uh, 
well, I really hate to say what NASA policy is, but I think I could be around to fly for quite a few more years yet. And as to how far I want to go, I want to go as far as uh, NASA goes in, during my useful time as a pilot to them. Uh, I'd like to go on a moon flight, and if we go to Mars, I'd like to go on that. Astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, assigned to the first Apollo mission, perished when fire engulfed the interior of their spacecraft during a launch rehearsal on January 27, 1967.